Is that unity a good thing on the war in Ukraine, Freddie? I think that unity is understandable given the incredible amount of suffering going on in Ukraine. But no, I don't think it is a good thing. Uh, I think it is dangerous when all the parties agree and that there is no discussion. And it almost feels like discussion is not allowed on this topic. If anyone uh, ventures any kind of hesitation about the Western plans in Ukraine, they're very quickly dismissed as a Putin apologist or an appeaser. That kind of rhetoric comes out. Whilst good people who are very compassionate about the outrageous invasion happening in Ukraine can legitimately ask, what is the end game? What is the long-term strategy of the Western powers? Are there escalation risks? We hear all about new tanks, new aircraft. How much would be too much? Those are fair questions, I think. And I would like to hear more people talking about how this ends and less of a certainty about how we can up the ante all the time. Paul? How it ends is that Putin pulls out of Ukraine. Uh, it's just really simple. Um, and we as a, you know, we're not just any old country. We have a, we, we are, we are a member of the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. We helped found the UN. Uh, we have a duty uh, that arises from that to, to do what we've done, which is for politics to stay united in, 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 in support of Ukraine. But I would argue, I don't think there is a consensus. I think actually beneath that consensus we had in the Commons, there's a lot of concern, not just along the lines that you've, that you've put, but for example, within, within my own party, Labour, but, you know, there's a, there's a wider feeling that if only this would go away and then things could go back to normal. Mm -hmm. And we know that because that's how people felt in the 1930s. If only Hitler and Mussolini would go away, we wouldn't have there to rearm. Is. I think Ben Wallace said it yesterday, today in The Sun. Uh, there's going to be a conflict within a decade. And I think that very, very few people in British politics are prepared to change the, their modus operandi. You said, I've changed. I've changed my modus operandi since being in Kiev to, to, to realise that this is the number one thing that's happening in my life, that it could destroy everything I've taken for granted, and that, therefore, politics has to respond to that. There, surely there are risks in both directions, right? There, there's got to be amount just purely doubling down increasing the rhetoric. Uh, we had President Biden talking against President Putin yesterday or the day before. Who in the Western powers or in the wider world is trying to pour cold water on this situation? Who is trying to say, how can we bring the end closer? What might a diplomatic solution look like? Because ultimately, if there's fighting and bloodshed and people dying for one more year or five more years or ten more years, a diplomatic solution ultimately is the only way to end it. We're not going to be marching on every, Moscow. The every they have 5,000 nuclear yeah. weapons pointing in this direction. The, the problem we have, and, and to your point around just very quickly about you know unity, just because we aren't actively disagreeing with each other does not mean, I mean I'm a foreign affairs spokesperson for my party, doesn't mean that we aren't thinking very deeply about these things, that there isn't actually discussion. And just because it's happening cross-party and it's trying to be very considered in the light of a man Putin, who is like going through the looking glass in Alice in Wonderland, lives in a completely alternative universe to us and actually wants a world order that is totally different to what we hold dear as democracies. I, I think I, I would just challenge you to say, don't assume that everyone's just thinking the same. We're not. We have constituents who write in very concerned about it. And it's not that we're taking it lightly. But the fact is, Putin himself is not in any mood to compromise. And I think he is very dangerous. I would agree with what Paul says, we are living through something that we are going to tell our grandchildren about. Mm. This is a complete change in not just this country, but the whole world. Geopolitics is back. This is really, really difficult stuff. And by all means, let's have a discussion. But let's not assume that it's not happening. It is happening. It's just happening in a way that's very considered. And perhaps... It's happening that's behind the scenes, then. So, it's happening behind no, the scenes. No, it is happening. Not, it's not necessarily happening behind the scenes. Well, here we are. And I, and I think, you know, for me, the... We, what we what we have what we're facing is a, a brutal, illegal invasion of Ukraine yeah. on the edge of the West. It impacts upon us all in many many different 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 ways, and 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 I actually think it's really important that we do remain. Uh, we have a, 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 a position of solidarity mm -hmm. as a country. We, there is space. I always believe in politics for discussion. It isn't always out there. It isn't always out on the on, on the on the front page of the newspapers. We have constituents that that come to us. The vast majority of constituents that come to me are in support of what yeah. the UK the UK UK is is is, is doing. So what about but fighter jets? What about think, fighter jets? To take up Freddie's point about is it rhetoric that's just mounting and escalating? 
Should fighter jets be sent? That's certainly what Boris Johnson I, and his trust have proposed. I, I genuinely believe that nothing should be off the table. However, well. there is a time and a place, and you do things in the right, in the right, in the right way. And in terms of the UK, we've we've committed something like two hundred and thirty yeah, yeah. billion pounds. Or last year, we'll we'll do the same. And I'm I'm actually pleased that the Prime Minister has asked the Defence Secretary to actually go away and look at what more we can yeah. do. But, what... but it's it's not just about weapons, is it? Yeah. It's it's right. also about looking at that piece long, long, longer, longer term. It is about security. It's about many other factors. Yeah, I think the key thing with the, it was interesting uh, for all sorts of political reasons the interventions for Boris Johnson and, and Liz Truss. But what they should know is that you also can't do that alone. The thing that Putin fears the most is not just the jets, but actually the unity of exactly. the West over this. You have to, if you are going to do this, then lead but as a whole. You have to convince other Western democratic but nations that is... they should be joining in too. And actually the effect this is having on cooperation, on repairing ties, on getting countries to talk to each other who maybe didn't about this for a long time, I think we will see a stronger you know, small L liberal international order that emerges from this, and that I think is a good thing. The West, you talk about, the West is shrinking, I'm afraid to say, before our eyes, because you look at the majority of countries in the world, they haven't picked a side on this. The West now feels like Western and Central Europe and North America, and increasingly the, it, the new world order in which America is no longer the global policeman that everyone will fall in behind is really being revealed here, and that's what is sobering and frightening. that. Because they're considered a compromised actor in this, because of the missteps over Afghanistan and Iraq, there's no longer the sense that America could actually police a settlement. And we've hit, we're now in the situation where people like China, these new rising that powers, are almost yeah. going to be coming in as the new arbiters. I mean, that is, that is a fear, isn't it? I mean, we've already heard Anthony Blinken saying that there is a risk that China starts supplying weapons and ammunition to Russia. An even bigger risk that very few people in the British establishment want to contemplate is that America walks away from NATO under a Republican president. So we have to plan for many eventualities. That's why we in Labour Party are so strongly supportive of NATO. NATO is, is an insurance policy and always has been since its foundation under a Labour government uh, of, uh, for, to try and to persuade America not to walk away. Whether it can be the global hegemon, I don't think it can be. Uh, China has a role to play in world politics. What, what, our job, what, what are all the tanks and fighter jets if is we send them? to spend them? more on defence, well, is to arm ourselves I, 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 want, I want rearmament, I want more defence, but more than that, that our job is, to, is to, to demonstrate to Beijing that you do not get things by breaking international law. And I think we can do that. I think that is a doable task. And that's why, uh, you know, despite my criticisms of the Iraq war and mm. the Afghan war, mm. I have been... Well, you, fully, what happened to the anti-war left? That is a fair question to Paul Mason. The Iraq war, the there anti -war were a million people sitting on the at this table supporting, supporting Quite right. Ukraine. And the Liberal Democrats were at the front of that too. Absolutely. Absolutely.